Automakers like Hyundai, Kia, and Lucid Motors have not yet joined the group of those who are switching to Tesla's NACS connector. And I believe one of those big reasons is the fact that Lucid's vehicles and Kia and Hyundai's newest vehicles, um, like the Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6, they feature a very high 800 plus volt architecture. However, Tesla's NACS connector is indeed capable of supporting a 1000 volt system, and apparently Tesla's V4 superchargers have the theoretical ability to operate at 1000 volts and may do so in the future. So let's discuss NACS and 1000 volt charging. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Beyond all the EV charger manufacturers and also um, charging station operators that plan to add Tesla's NACS connector to their machines, um, the following companies have also announced plans to implement NACS ports in 2025 into their vehicles. Ford, GM, Rivian, Volvo, Polestar, Mercedes, and of course, startup Aptera. In addition, VW is apparently in discussions with Tesla about a potential NACS switch in the future, according to this Electric article. But automakers like Stellantis, Hyundai, Kia, Lucid Motors, Toyota, BMW, and Mazda, for example, have not yet announced that they're going to make the switch. I'm sure each one of the automakers that haven't yet announced that they're making the switch to Tesla's NACS connector have their reasons. And we do know that one of the big reasons why Lucid Motors has not switched over comes down to the fact that they have equipped their vehicles with a very high voltage architecture. Lucid Motors CEO Peter Rawlinson made this very clear um, when he was asked specifically about switching from CCS1 to NACS in a Wall Street Journal interview last month, as was reported by this Inside EVs article. And the author of this article wrote, um, really summarizing uh, Peter Rawlinson's response to that question, quote, Lucid's boss does not appear to be too excited about NACS. He pointed out that the CCS1 and NACS are just plastic plugs with some copper. Now let's set aside the fact that Tesla has an extremely large and extremely reliable uh, charging network in the United States and really globally, but we're talking about the United States here specifically. Um, they have a very large, vast, convenient, and very reliable charging network that is uh, equipped with NACS connectors. So let's just set that aside for a minute. Obviously NACS is not just a plug, it has a very robust charging network behind it, but let's just set that aside for a minute and let's just actually go to the plugs themselves since Peter Rawlinson brought that up. If you take an NACS plug and you put that next to a CCS1 plug, the NACS plug is more compact and it's easier to handle, whereas the CCS1 plug is very big and clunky. When you just look at it, you can see that one is superior. You could say a lot of things are just this. It's just a steak. It's just a hotel. It's just a house. Yes, you could say it's just a plug, but one of those plugs is much superior, the Tesla NACS charger plug and charger port. In a November 2022 blog post, which I have referenced in past videos, when Tesla announced that they were opening up their charging standard to other automakers and uh, machine operators, they did point out the fact that um, the NACS charging connector is capable of up to one megawatt DC charging. And they mentioned that it's half the size and twice as powerful as combined charging system connectors, which is CCS. Now, to be fair to Peter Rawlinson, I do understand what he's saying here. And the author of this Inside EVs article did go on to further summarize uh, comments from Peter Rawlinson. And basically, his point is that, yes, NACS and CCS1, those are just plugs. What matters more is the charger behind those. And he is pushing for very high voltage charging systems that will allow the current to be lower and increase the efficiency of charging. In order to demonstrate what we're talking about here, lowering current by raising voltage, it's important that you realize that there's a basic um, electrical equation that says that amps times volts equals watts. So for instance, if you have a 250 kilowatt uh, Tesla V3 supercharger, if that system is running at a 500 volt architecture at 500 amps, that would give you 250 kilowatts of power. 
However, if that system were instead running on a 1000 volt architecture, you would be able to hit that same 250 kilowatts at only 250 amps. Being able to fast charge with a lower amperage does allow you to have thinner cables and thinner wires, and apparently there's less losses and the charging is actually more efficient as well. Nonetheless, the NACS charging connector um, can support 1000 volts, as Tesla makes very clear in the technical specifications of the connector. You can see here on this particular page it's written, latching geometry is identical between the 500 volt and 1000 volt configurations. It's also written here, quote, the North American charging standard exists in both a 500 volt rated configuration and a 1000 volt rated configuration. The 1000 volt version is mechanically backwards compatible, i.e. 500 volt inlets can mate with 1000 volt connectors and 500 volt connectors can mate with 1000 volt inlets. So for charging station manufacturers and operators who have very high voltage charging systems, the Tesla NACS connector will work just fine. You can actually connect it to those systems. For example, Electrify America currently has a number of DC fast chargers in the USA that are capable of up to 350 kilowatt charging and allow vehicles with high voltage architectures like the Lucid Air, Porsche Taycan, Hyundai Ioniq 5, etc. to charge very quickly. And according to this article on TheVerge.com, Electrify America does plan to add Tesla's NACS connector to their chargers in the future. They don't plan to only have NACS connectors, but they're going to add them alongside of their CCS connectors. But nonetheless, I don't believe Electrify America will throttle these down, but they'll connect it in such a way that these NACS connectors, once again, will be able to take advantage of the high voltage system behind that, the charging system, and you'll be able to charge an NACS connected vehicle even with a high voltage because once again, Tesla's technical specs say that their connector can handle the 1000 volt setup, no problem. Now going back to Peter Rollinson, I believe what he was saying more was that Tesla's supercharger may be vast. However, um, their current uh, V3 and V2 superchargers they don't operate on a high voltage. I think they operate at like 500 volts. I believe that's correct, um, up to 500 volts. So for example, if you were to connect the Lucid Air to a Tesla V3 supercharger, it would not be able to take full advantage of the capabilities built into that vehicle with a high voltage system. It would charge at a slower rate than it would if connected to a high volt charger like one of Electrify America's chargers. So I believe Peter Rollinson is basically saying that he doesn't wanna lock the industry into a lower voltage architecture. But once again, I don't believe that's the case with the NACS connector that it doesn't do that. And once again, going back to Tesla's V4 superchargers, which they um, are bringing out in the future. And I believe there's one in existence right now, as far as I know. Uh, but Tesla's V4 superchargers do have very high power and apparently may have a 1000 volt system already built into it. According to this article on TheVerge.com, which discusses um, a V4 supercharger that is installed in the Netherlands. The author of this article wrote, quote, the V4 supercharger is theoretically capable of providing up to 615 kilowatts of power, 615 amps at 1000 volts. But the app says it's limited to 250 kilowatts at the moment, same as V3 charging stalls. So I don't know about you, but I find that really interesting. It appears like with Tesla's V4 superchargers that they have the system already in place for a 1000 volt charging experience. So as Tesla moves to um, opening up their supercharger network to more and more brands, uh, really starting next year and then really going full force in 2025, by 2025, I expect in the USA that we'll have quite a few of these V4 superchargers installed and likely um, eventually, if not immediately, but eventually they will have um, very high charging abilities that I believe could even surpass Electrify America once again with a theoretical capacity of over 600 kilowatts of charging. Now, when it comes to the electric architecture of Tesla's vehicles, every Tesla vehicle, with the exception of the Tesla Semi, features a lower voltage system. However, the Tesla Semi does feature a 1000 volt powertrain and possibly a battery as well. 
As the author of this Inside EVs article wrote back in December of 2022, quote, Tesla announced during the semi-delivery event that the truck is equipped with an all-new 1,000-volt powertrain, which is a major contributor to the outstanding efficiency of the vehicle. It has 500 miles of range, after all. Tesla does not elaborate further on what it really means, though, whether it's exactly 1,000 volts or around 1,000 volts, whether it's a nominal value or peak, whether it's only for the battery system or also for the three inverters and motors, which we assume. If the Tesla Semi has a 1,000 volt powertrain, logically it could make a lot of sense for the Cybertruck to also have a 1,000 volt powertrain. And that's actually something the author of this Inside EVs article does bring up in the article. Um, but if that is the case, and if the Cybertruck does have a 1,000 volt powertrain, then that would also line up with the fact that once again, the theoretical max charging rate of Tesla's V4 superchargers is apparently over 600 kilowatts, and apparently that system can run at 1,000 volts. So at the end of the day, Tesla's NACS connector is clearly superior to CCS1, is capable of supporting high voltage architectures if connected to the right charging station hardware, and Tesla's V4 superchargers could very well offer high charging speeds of up to 600 kilowatts in the future and operate at very high voltages. So in the end, if automakers want to stay relevant and really survive, I believe they will have to switch over to NACS. And by the end of this year, I predict most, if not all of the holdouts will announce that they are adopting NACS in the future because I believe they'll be left behind if they don't. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.